welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a Niti Yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well, that 2019 is starting well for you. Happy New Year! And yes, I have just come back from my little old holiday break and yes, I feel refreshed and ready to start a new year and kind of incorporate the changes that I have been thinking about at the end of last year into the podcast as well. So you might not see a big difference in terms of the format, but I do want to think more about what my podcasts bring uh, in terms of being instructive and informative. And yeah, basically I just decided to try and select a little bit more the content that I share with you so that my podcasts aren't just very long, rambly videos of me showing off projects that I don't have much things to show share uh, about because they're just vanilla socks or whatever. So yes, uh, I just want to shift things a little bit and be a little bit um, happier about the purpose of this podcast. Not that I dislike doing it, on the contrary, I absolutely love to share lots of things but I, I kind of feel like podcasting is a lot of work and I really want to be happy about what I'm doing and I just want it to be a little bit more representative of how I approach my knitting which is kind of very um, specific in fact. I am very much technique and materials oriented and I want my podcast to reflect that. So. I will just be a bit more selective about the projects that I share here on the podcast and try and make shorter videos overall. For this podcast I will have uh, a design release that I just want to quickly announce, a finished object that I am wearing and that is killing me because it's super warm. I also have two works in progress that are super interesting, uh, super interesting, I mean that I actually have interesting things to share about them. And um, I will finish with a very special yarn that I have just received for a collaboration and I want to share the project with you a little bit. So, yeah, you can find timestamps to everything that I talk about in the description down below. So if you want to skip anything, feel free to jump ahead. I will also put links to everything that I talk about as well as my social media and patterns for sale on Ravelry. So. Let's start with the design release of this beginning of the year actually and it's a project that you have already seen because I've been knitting it on the podcast so I'm not gonna get into too much details about it but ta-da! <laughs> the Popa Shawl is live on Ravelry. It is available, I will put the link in the description. Yes, hello mom, what do you want? Oh, my mom is texting me. Hello mom. Ah, uh, she's not watching. This is an asymmetrical triangular shawl that features lots of garter stitch, one color brioche and mosaic knitting. And it's a really relaxing knit that is easy to adapt to however much yarn you need. I personally used yarn from By Simone, which is a French indie dyer that is very good at making semi-solid uh, colors. So if you're looking for something contrasty, um, I highly recommend that you check her work. And I have used about 600 meters of the main colors and 70 meters of each of the contrasting colors. So the pattern is easy to adapt, it's really quick and relaxing to knit and my testers really liked the shape. I do too, I love a good asymmetrical shawl. It's really simple in its construction. It has small details like um, how to take care of the edging so that it's neat and consistent on both sides. And yes, my testers also have told me that they really appreciated how um, beginner friendly it was because I include in the pattern a tutorial on mosaic knitting. So. If you want to learn mosaic, which, if you don't know, is a technique of color work which involves slipped stitches, so you only carry one color at a time. The pattern contains a whole video where I explain how it works, how you're supposed to read the chart, and you actually see me 
knitting this bit here so that um, you can kind of visualize as I'm explaining. And there are also written instructions in the pattern in case you don't need uh, to watch the full video. It's not a very long video, but it's just I try to make it as um, explicit as possible. And the one color flat brioche is also very easy to learn if you're new to brioche. And yes, optional tassels because tassels are fun. And yes, so this is Papa. Uh, and it's available on Ravelry uh, since last week. So yay! I hope you like it. You did say as I was making it that you really were looking forward to it. So here it is. Uh, Papa is simply um, a cute. Uh, a cute old-fashioned names uh, from the region where I'm from, which is Occitanie, which is the southwest of France. It's kind of a medieval type name, uh, because I thought it was cute, because the mosaic popped. Voila. <laughs> um, I will move on to the finished objects and what I'm wearing, because yes, guys, I finished my alpaca poncho. So if you've been following the podcast for a while, you may remember, remember, words, you may remember that in April last year, yes, April, I had the impression it was June, but no, it's April. In April last year, I cast on the Saunders poncho, which is a pattern by uh, the Jessica Gore, who's the sweater collective on social media. And it's a beautiful drapey alpaca poncho with mo double mustache and this cable front. I'm going to get up in a bit so you can see. And basically, it took me, so April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, it took me more than eight months to work the back, which is this huge rectangle of double mustache. I just got distracted and I think it really contributed to me being a bit uh, tired of having too many works in progress at once. But uh, I decided that I will dedicate my holidays to doing that poncho because I really wanted to wear it for this winter and I think it is gorgeous and I, I, just, I just couldn't bear seeing that square of double mustache lying around in my basket of whips. So I did, and in two weeks, I finished the back and did the front. Yay, Audrey, <laughs> eight months <laughs> to finish the back, two weeks to finish it all. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, I rarely have long lasting whips. So this was really awkward for me, but I am so happy with the finish results. The drape of this is absolutely stunning. Uh, it is knit in 100% alpaca wool, so can I actually jump on my yep, chair to try and show you? So uh, I've used Drop Spuna, which I had in my stash forever, uh, which is 100% alpaca. This is the light grey colour. So it's just two simple rectangles of double mustache at the back and these beautiful cables at the front which are ribbed based cables which give them a really cool texture like they, they're naturally brought forward to the knitting I'm sorry if I'm making noise moving around <laughs> the thing is alpaca always has a small halo and it doesn't have the best definition so when you want to make cables with alpaca, um, it's a bit tricky to have them pop. And I think this was really clever because they're ribbed based. What I mean is that this is, for example, a six stitch cable and it's divided three and three and there's a pearl stitch in, in between. It naturally makes it pop. So that is very clever and they're really fun to work. The whole cable panel is really interesting and motivating and at the same time it's not too it's uh, it's not too hard to keep track of I was able to do it while I was watching movies so yes it's a 16 row whip it I think so it's not too big sorry I'm a bit out of breath because I moved I am really not in a good shape at the moment 
I've put on weight and <laughs> I feel it and this is not the topic of the podcast but I'm sorry I'm out of breath because I'm really unfit at the moment. Um, yes, there are also lines of slip stitches and I really like these and yeah, it is just really beautiful and I am really happy that I got through it because it is gorgeous and I love it. So, um, you finish the whole thing, obviously, by using a three needle bind off on the shoulders. I love doing three needle bind offs, so that wasn't a problem for me. I really enjoyed the long, because um, I think it's like 70 stitches that you need to uh, bind off together on each side, so that's quite a lot for a shoulder. But, I mean, it's a, it's a poncho. Also, the pattern has two sizes, um, either medium large or small medium. Now, I believe that I said in one of my latest podcast episodes that I was making the bigger one, the one that had that were, was going to go all the way up to my wrist. I was wrong. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a whip that lasts uh, eight months. You don't remember what you're doing. And basically, I was on the back and when I started shaping for the neck, I realized, wait, I don't have the amount of stitches I should have. And that's how I realized I had actually decided to make the small medium size, which as you can see, finishes around my elbow. And I perfectly remember why I chose to do that. It's because I have a lot of uh, store-bought ponchos that are um, very long and very uh, blanket type. And so I thought, well, I can have a cool little poncho that I can actually maybe put a coat or wear a little bit more like a sweater. I've been considering uh, putting a belt here and try and have that sort of style. Uh, but anyway, I really, I like that I actually was doing the smaller size. I can only imagine my problems if... Uh, oh, that back is massive. Like, let me... See, see that? That's huge. That's really huge. And so, if I was doing the small size, how would it have been for the even longer one? Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> I, um... I really, really like it. I did want to say, yes, uh, the neckline, I modified it a little bit. I picked up 30 stitches less than what the pattern calls for. And um, I didn't knit it the ribbing very long, which I might change a little bit because it's very heavy. It's about almost 700 grams, I believe. And it's alpaca, so it's going to drag, 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 drag down. Uh, because alpaca is very drapey and it's very heavy, so it's beautiful, but it does not keep its structure. Which is not a problem for an alpaca poncho, for a poncho overall, because it's um, it's meant to be like quite drapey and blankety and really big. But um, in the end, maybe the neckline is going to end up way, way too open. So I might, if that happens too much for my liking, um, pick it up again and knit it a bit longer. But yeah, I already did it shorter on what the pattern suggests, so yeah. I think that's all I wanted to say. Let me actually check my notes. Uh, um, yes, my the back is much longer than the front. I, I'm not sure if that's intentional, but if I try and show you again, no, you can't see much, but it is much, much longer. About... About this much longer. Which... Um, I could totally have made um, another repeat of the front cable. But I actually kind of like that the back is much longer. It really goes over my um, posterior. I don't know if that's a way to see over my bum basically um, and yeah it is um, it's okay like this but I just want um, you to 
know that if you only do eight repeats of the cable like the pattern says you might not have uh, what well, my raw gauge was correct so uh yeah maybe maybe my um my raw gauge was um correct in double knot stitch and so obviously in the cables it might not be the same so i probably should have done an extra repeat to uh, get to the right measurements, which I sort of did, so I'm not so sure what happened. Um, yeah, maybe it is designed to be much uh, longer on the back. I don't know, I can't tell from the pictures. But yes, I think that's all I had to say about this poncho. I have a little um, wind on the <laughs> On the tip of my nose and it's driving me insane i am really sorry if it's distracting please please ignore it <laughs> um blah, blah, blah. i think i've done i've said everything i wanted to indeed i have so i can move on to works in progress and the first one oh boy the first one so if you have seen the video about my make nine you will know that i wanted to make the four fox sake sweater which is a pattern by Maxime Cyr and uh, is there a photo yes there a photo. this one you probably have seen it all over Instagram because it got really popular I want to make it for my boyfriend for his birthday in February and I have started it <laughs> so I am really excited and it has been lots of fun so far, so I underestimated how complicated the color work would be. It's not, it's not that it's complicated, it's, it's just that it's definitely not a beginner friendly pattern. So if you love this pattern and want to make it but you're not very comfortable color work wise, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's not complicated but you have to be a little bit comfortable about your tension and about how to maneuver the yarns because that basically this pattern combines two of the difficult things about color work is one three colors two very long floats so basically the the motifs are quite spread out and so you cast on I'm knitting the second size and as you can see, oh, and you can see the floats through the fabric. I don't know if this is going to look good in the end because of that, because of these long pieces of just one color when you're actually carrying three colors at once. So you kind of, yeah, it's um, it's a bit tricky um, because you kind of have to consider several things at once basically you 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 sometimes need to catch two colors and the thing is you have to do it on so many rows that it's really hard not to do it in a spot where it's you've already caught something on the previous row and uh, I managed to do it and still you can see that it's not looking very good I'm hoping blocking will uh, fix that if not, well, that's just how knitting is. Um, there's that, and then there's the color dominance thing, which, um, so if you don't know, uh, color dominance is the really subtle but present phenomenon that happens when you're knitting color work, is that the yarn that you carry under the other will pop more. And um, this is why when you need color work you try and put your colors in a certain place and not move them <laughs> because if you're inconsistent uh, you might not get a clear motif. In general you want your dominant color to be the motif uh, so that it pops against the background. You, well, that's how I usually want it, <laughs> that's how I write my patterns and that's how logic would want you to do however you do whatever you want sometimes it's really fun to see um when the background and the foreground color are shifting especially when you have geometric uh, more scandinavian type 
uh, color work, it's really fun to see the difference and it makes this kind of optical illusion just by changing the position of the colors. And this is really fun to do and it's totally um, cool to do that as well. In my case, I do usually want the motif color to be dominant. So, and in order to be dominant, you need to carry it under the other ones. And so logically it needs to be on the left when you position your yarns. Uh, I've talked about this before. Um, yes. <laughs> um, but when you have three colors, uh, sometimes it's really you have to decide which colors you which color you want to pop. And in certain cases, it's really obvious. Like here, obviously, the white forming the outline is the clearer motif color. So that's what I held dominant here. Uh, and whenever this was the yellow pop, I held the yellow dominant because it's supposed to be a sharp accent, so that's what I wanted to push forward. However, there are certain uh, spots, and if I can show you the picture of the sweater again, I'm hiding the, the thing. Look at the foxes. Do you want the glasses of the foxes to pop? You could, but the problem is the glasses are the same color as the background. And so you can't do that. <laughs> and so I think that I will just hold the outline, the hair of the fox, which is my gold color. I think I will pick that one to be dominant overall. Um, but yeah, again, uh, this is a very, this is a subtle difference. It's not gonna make or break your color. I like to think about it because I just like to be kind of mathematical about my knitting at times and this fits right into it so yes um so it's it's a bit tricky it so far it doesn't look perfect it looks really interesting but um i'm really hoping uh, blocking will make it better um will make it as good as i want it to be but it is super fun to knit, it's really engaging and I started on a weekend and basically I did all of this in one go because I just couldn't stop and even though all around here it was even worse in a sense because you had to increase so you had to catch float, handle three colors and increase at the same time on color work rounds. Yeah. Um, and also he doesn't use he doesn't use um, conventional symbols for increases, which sometimes had me <laughs> kind of bug until I finally got uh, the logic of it, and then I uh, then it was smooth. Uh, it's not a problem. But um, yes, this is how it looks so far, and I'm really looking forward to finishing the yoke, <laughs> and then on to really uh, simple stocking it. It is. Now, um, I might, as you can see, there is no short rows here on the neckline. I've looked through the pattern and there are short rows after the yoke. I will see if that's enough. I don't think it will be for my taste and for my boyfriend's taste, because in the end he's the one who's going to wear it. Um, so I might, before picking up the neckline, add some short rows uh, to the neck. But eh, it's a bit scrunched up on the needle. But yeah, you can kind of get the idea. I am using um, Dererum Natura yarn Ulysse, uh, which is a beautiful carded 100% uh, merino. Uh, it's a blend of French merino, well, Merino d'Arles, uh, who is, which is sourced in France, and Portuguese merino. And the colors I'm using are granit, baleine bleu, doré, and the white one is uh, sel. And so, yes, it works really well for color work. But yeah, like I said here, the thing is all the floats that had to be caught uh, in between increases and things. And so that's why you, if I press the fabric, it's awful. Hopefully blocking will make that not happen. Um, yes, you can see the head of the fox is appearing. So, 
yeah, I believe that is all. Again, it's really, really fun to knit on. I just, yeah, when I'm on the weekend and I can uh, focus on it a little bit longer, I just can't stop <laughs> knitting on the chart. I'm halfway down the chart now, a little bit less than halfway. I'm a little bit um, too optimistic about it. But yeah, in the evening I'm able to do two or three rows. I kind of have to focus on it. Like last night I had to redo a row three times because I got it wrong um, consistently for some reason. But um, yeah, it's going well and I'm really enjoying it despite the trickiness. So if you fell in love with this weather, buckle up. Uh, make sure you're comfortable color work wise. Um, but then it is really, really fun. And yeah, basically, I think that's all I had to say about it. Oh no, I didn't swatch. Ha, uh, that's what happens uh, when you're lazy. Um, I didn't swatch and I kind of know what gauge I can get with Ulysse depending on the needle size. And so I started with uh, four millimeter needles and you can see here at the beginning and I don't know, I kind of felt like this was a bit tight and I wasn't really confident that this would have the ease that I wanted for my boyfriend. And so I switched to 4.5 around here, <laughs> basically I switched. Um, it's not a problem because uh, well, the sweater needs to be bigger, so if I go up a needle size, it just makes it even better. Um, but yeah, uh, now I, have, I was able to measure and now I have gauge on 4.5 millimeter. So, yes, <laughs> I'm reassured because I posted on Instagram when I started knitting it. <laughs> uh, I need to hold three colors to catch lot of loads and to increase at the same time, but I didn't swatch, so imagine... <laughs> If it is wrong but um, it's okay <laughs> it's gonna be okay uh, I will try it on after I uh, split uh, for the arms and body and yeah I know it needs to be slightly too much for me to be okay on my boyfriend so yes <laughs> it is very interesting because I am planning a design for autumn, I hope, which will involve uh, holding three colors. And I, thanks to this, I can see which rows pose problem, cause problem and which rows are okay. So I can now practice on my three colors uh, color work, which I didn't do so much. And so I can uh, kind of get a feel of the right rhythm for it to be enjoyable. And so it really helps me uh, regarding that. So I hope that the design I'm thinking about will be pleasurable to knit and that I will be able to make something that works with three colors but um, that minimizes kind of the, the painful aspect of it at times so that it doesn't alter the rhythm of the knitting. I can, I'm able to see which rows are good because you, you get the logic mathematical rhythm and which rows are a bit tricky because it just there's too much space between motif and yeah I my brain cannot get used to it enough so that I get into the comfortable smooth rhythm of color work so yeah it's really helping me in that regard and I am really looking forward to continuing it now, the second work in progress I want to share with you is a design. And it's a design that I am not keeping secret, but I don't want to show too much of it. It's a collaboration with Maison Corlaine, which um, I have uh, talked about previously because I had made my Tolosa garment out of it, and um, as well as the Hildebra, which is still not out yet and um, we're uh, waiting on that but yeah uh, I am working on a new collaboration with them which I'm really happy about and I am using this one which is their blue face luster 
100% Superwash Bluefest Leicester yarn in the Shepherd color. And it's a fingering weight yarn. It's a rather fine fingering weight. It has 400 meter to 100 grams. It's nicely tightly twisted and nice. And I just really, I love BFL. And I think this color um, particularly works with BFL. It's like a taupey, beigey gray. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see all the nuances, but the thing with BFL is that it's it has that weird slick shininess to it. It feels matte but shiny at the same time. It's really strange. And um, this really subtle taupey, sometimes it's beige, sometimes it's grey, sometimes it's a bit more like you see if I bring it next to my face it looks a little bit more pink. Um, and it's just it's just really working with uh, the BFL and I am really liking it. Um, the idea is to make a nice spring sweater and so that's what I'm doing and I have a full body, yay! <laughs> so um, this is a raglan uh, sweater and the idea is that it's going to be a fairly simple design. It has a cable panel at the front and yep, you've seen it. It has a cable panel at the front uh, but overall it's it remains fairly simple. So the idea for me is to have a nice precise sizing, a fit that I have haven't done before. So I have done two raglan designs previously. The Tolosa, which is um, a bit blousy, a bit more on the oversized type, which with a, a waist that goes really in and stops here because it's cropped. The Feriga, which is a bit more large and bulky and countryside coat-like type of raglan with no uh, fitting um, in the body. And this time for this, since it's going to come out in spring, I wanted to have something really feminine but comfortable. So I wanted a fit that is with positive ease but that it's is still adjusted to uh, you, people's figure. And so regarding the raglan, as usual the neck is higher. This time you start flat. You actually start flat for the neck and then you join for the in a round. It has more stitches at the front than at the back to accommodate cables and bust. Um, and as far as the raglan goes, it uh, it's a bit curved towards the end as well. The sleeves will be not fitted, just a little bit of positive ease. But the main thing is the body and I have for the first time incorporated waist shaping. And so the idea, as usual, is in my pattern, in my sweater patterns, that you're able to tailor it to yourself. So I have measured fixed points and I will include in the pattern where you need to do certain things. And so I'm going to try and do it so you can see. It looks really funny now because it's not blocked. And yeah, you can see. So there is waist shaping and then hip shaping. So basically the sweater goes in and then out just before the uh, twisted rib. Yeah, all the finishes will be in twisted rib. There'll be something special at the sleeves, but uh, I will show you that when it actually happens. So, and I've tried it on. This fits so well. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's really flattering. That's what I wanted. I wanted something that is feminine and flattering, but comfortable. And uh, so far it's a success and I'm really happy with it. Uh, it really looks good on me. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait. It's already graded. Um, and basically I need to, I'm going to make one sleeve because like I said, the sleeves, um, well, I'm going to make mine three quarter. You can make yours, whatever. <laughs> but there's, uh, there's gonna be a detail at this cuff. And so I need to make one sleeve and then I will ask for testers. If you are interested in testing my patterns, keep an eye on Instagram. That's why I ask. So I assume I will call for testers for this sweater pretty soon. Once I've done that sleeve. 
But yes, again, I'm going to flash that cable for you. you there it is. Uh, it's a simple cable. It's easy to memorize. It's a logic cable. It's mirrored and it's two parts and it's mirrored and it's logical. And basically, if you have forgotten to twist some stitches, you will see it right away. So let me just show you more the color. It's absolutely beautiful. I have alternated skeins, uh, even though they were really, really similar. I couldn't see any difference, but I have alternated just to be safe. And also because, so you know that a knit stitch before a purse stitch can get really loose. And the thing is when you have a cable panel somewhere, you, you will notice that on the beginning it can be really loose whereas on the other side it's okay because a knit stitch after a purl stitch is all right but a knit stitch before a purl stitch that is surrounding the cable can get really loose and so what i did is that i alternated stitches um I alternated yarn just to the side of the cable here so that it will naturally tighten this part and so that way, my two sides kind of look the same. Um, yes, little detail if you are making cables and you're not happy with how the edge of the cable look because one is much looser than the other. Um, I sort of fudged that here by alternating skeins, even though I think I didn't have to. But yeah, I kept some, I kept some of the first skein that I separated here uh, and I'm going to alternate with my last one. I need to cake that soon, later today probably. And then I'm going to make a sleeve and yes, hopefully this will be done quickly so I can call for testers ASAP. But yes, I really like the yarn. I knit it on uh, 325 millimeter needles and yeah, it's looking really good. I really like the, the nuance. I think it's going to be a really wearable, uh, really, really wearable garment. And I can't wait to finish it, to send it to testers and see if it works and to see what Maison Coralene thinks of the finished thing when it's going to be blocked and not look like a whole weird thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I am really happy with how it fits me so far, so looking forward to continue. This will be called sonat, uh, sonate, sonat, um, which is the French word for son sonata. Son I think you say sonata, like the Italians in English, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, just because I felt that the cable stitches kind of, yeah, may reminded me of, of ways and sort of, declensions of notes of music notes and it's i don't know <laughs> i got inspired to call it sonat because i think it works well for a spring garment and it matches the cables logic um i think this is it for the whips did i say everything i need to say <sighs> yes 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 now to the last little bit of this podcast is some really cool yarn that I want to share with you. I've been contacted a few months ago by Nomad Nus. I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, um, which is a new yarn, a new brand of yarn. They're based in Switzerland and basically they have a really interesting um, process. What they do is that they hire women from the Tibetan mountains to spin their yarn. So you, they um, source yak and um, Tibetan mountain Mongolian sheep uh, wool from there and then they hire, so far they have five Tibetan women spinners that they're hiring for their yarn. They're looking to expand this. Uh, they have a very um, nice description and presentation of all the spinners on their website. I will link to their website in the description down below, obviously. And basically their sort of motto is knit for good. So yes, they they have a really good... Um, I, I never have that word. Uh, 
philosophy it's not really yeah it's philosophy but in french we have another word that is much more convenient and i can't i can never remember the english term for it anyway um and yeah they contacted me a couple of uh, months ago asking more than that asking me if i wanted to uh, collaborate with them because they've been looking forward to present their yarn to the world and um to collaborate with more designers this year and I said yes, absolutely. I was very curious and interested to discover their yarn. They have a variety of ranges of different blends of yak, camel, um, sat sartul sheep. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering things. Sartul sheep. I don't. I'm pronouncing it like an idiot probably um, because I have no idea uh, of how it's supposed to sound like. Uh, I should probably uh, don't. A better research than Google Trad, which frankly is terrible when you ask him pronunciations. Um, but yes, so uh, we've been back and forth thinking of a possible design that I could make. Have have an idea for a cardigan um, with a bit of, like a simple cardigan with a bit of color work on the sleeves, maybe. Um, I'm not so sure. I have, to, I have to think and swatch and see what fits the yarn because I got yarn. They, uh, we have finally decided on this combo. And so this is two different uh, blend. This is 100% uh, hand spun. So all the yarns are hand spun. Yes, this is hand spun. Um, this is a two ply. I, yes. And this is 100% yak. And the colorway is Yes, My Ingle Can Do. And it's this stunning rust color. It's beautiful. Uh, I think I'm surprising no one when I show you this. You know, this is one of my favorite colors. It's absolutely beautiful. Obviously, it's yak, it's super soft, it has a really good depth. And this is... This is Sartul uh, Sheep, Smooth Sartul Sheep. So it's 100% uh, wool from uh, herders from Mongolia. It's a breed of sheep that I had never heard of before. It's a breed of sheep from Mongolia. And Merino is so bad. <laughs> this is the softest thing in the world. Compared to fine Merino, fine Merino really feels super harsh. This is the softest thing. This is softer than the yak. It makes no sense. I touched this and I was what the hell is that sheep? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful and melting. It's really... It has the melting gentleness of alpaca, but it's not prickly like alpaca. It's really, really, really super soft. Softer than the yak. I just don't understand. <laughs> it's incredible. So, it's written like this. Sartul sheep. And... Yes, so this is a white, Altai white shade, and it's really beautiful. Again, hand spun, everything is hand spun, it's great, I absolutely love it. Um, lots of knitters have sort of prejudice against knitting with hand spun because it's irregular, blah blah blah. Um, so I think it's a really good thing that they want to put this forward, and what I really like is that on every skein. Uh, you have the uh, picture, the picture and the name of the person who uh, spun it for you. So this is Suita, and this is Fulmaya. And again, I'm probably not saying this right. Um, but yeah, and then you can look on their website and see the presentation of the person, uh, how they're supporting their family thanks to this a little bit. And I think it's really great what they're doing. So the the brand themselves are based in Switzerland and yeah, it's a small production, so um, they have uh, lots of different sized skeins, um, different, sometimes they weigh differently, they're not exactly, like this is 54 grams, you see, this is 25, I have a bunch of them to make, hopefully, uh, the lovely cardigan I'm thinking about and yes, I am really looking forward to testing this and seeing how it works. Um, yeah, yeah, I was thinking, I was hesitating between the simple cardigan with a cable detail or the color work thing I'm thinking about. And looking at them, I will swatch the color work thing first because I think this, it, it's what would fit 
this type of um, of thread and it's it's a little bit it has a little bit of halo they're very similar the two of them um they're two ply they yeah they they really have a really good personality then you can look at the at the little uh, hand spinning um, details that you can see that some are a little bit thinner I think this will look good in colorwork and yes I'm looking forward to playing with that uh, Nomad knows if you're looking thank you so much I will uh, really really I will show you the design as it comes to life and yes so I think with these beauties I have talked about everything I wanted to talk about for this episode. I have no idea if I succeeded in making a shorter episode than usual. Maybe a little bit, uh, maybe not so much. Um, but yes, um, let's say I've just been back from holiday so if it's long that's why. Uh, even though I tried to be a little bit more um, to the point than I usually am. So. Yes, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you will have a lovely uh, couple of weeks. I don't know when I will record next. Again, the whole thing is to now only record an episode when I actually have things to say. So I might not be as regular as before. But um, yeah, hopefully you won't mind. And yeah, I'm so very grateful for those of you who still watch my episodes. And yeah. I hope you are all doing well and I will see you next time. Bye!